powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And, of course, right here on the Sports Bash, it is brought to you today by the Gallery Bar Book and Games at Ocean Casino Resort where you can get your game on every Monday with the Sports Bash. Cheers your favorite drinks while cheering on your favorite team. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Go for the win. For more information, visit OceanAC.com. Must be 21 or older to play. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Eagles uh, halfway through the season. 8-0, Adam Kaplan. And uh, your power rankings are up. And, Man, everybody is talking about the Eagles 8-0, the Bills lost, the Chiefs kind of scuffed their way through. The big thing we keep hearing, man, we've got a ton of engagement and, and text messages today. You got this group of people who say the Eagles haven't played anybody, the mm-hmm. 8-0 is frivolous. Where do you have the Eagles inside the Birds' power rankings after eight weeks of football? Or actually nine, because the Eagles have had their bye. All right, so Mike, I'm... I moved them to number two, from number two to number one. I moved them back to number one. Still the NFL's undefeated team, the lone one. You mentioned the Chiefs. What an unbelievable game they had Sunday night. That that was one of the best games of the season. It was terrific. I just wish the Titans could throw the ball better. They run it. They're they're still running it like any no one's business. The best running team of the NFL right now. Uh, they've got an excellent front. They just they're not great in the secondary. How about Mahomes throwing it sixty eight times? But they, they found a way to win. Then the Bills, who I had number one, I'm, wor- I'm worried about Josh Allen's uh, – I'm worried about his right elbow, which he hurt in the game. And, and their loss, their terrible loss to the Jets. They had a sizable lead and blew it. Plus, they're injured at safety. So those would be my top three right now, Eagles, Chiefs, Bills. What do you say, Adam, to those uh, – about the Eagles' schedule? Do you have a problem? I mean, oh, they haven't played anybody. You know, I can't be impressed by their wins. Uh, are you uh, someone who says, yeah, they, they really haven't had that signature win yet? Or, I mean, are you like me? I say the whole league hasn't had a signature. There's nobody to beat. Exactly. Yeah, you and I talked about their schedule last week. I, I You have to really watch all 32 teams. When people say, well, this team hasn't played this team or that they haven't played a good schedule – because the league is so down in terms of competitiveness, I know the games are closer, but it's a lot of bad teams. As Tom Brady said, there's a lot of bad football. It's not just me or you saying it. Tom Brady said it weeks ago, and his team's also, by the way, not very good. <laughs> so if you just look at it, A, they're being the teams that are, are on their schedule. They're undefeated. Not only are they undefeated, they, they're under this staff, I think they're, what, 13-4 and four, uh, on the road? That's another un- incredible stat for a young coaching staff. That That's very impressive. Um. They're just, they're very well coached. It's kind of one of the things, Mike, I, I'm not sure what they, you can only play the teams on your schedule, and that's just, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Uh, well, you yeah, only they're, play they're the teams through. on your schedule, but people will judge your schedule. Yeah, no, I get that. Now, they're 10 and 3 on the road with the staff. And by the way, the in 2017, their Super Bowl season, this goes to show you if you want to go far, you got to win on the road. They were 6 and 2. Of course, they, they were on a 16 game schedule, eight row games. And this staff is 4-0 and on the road and 10-3 and overall on the road. Uh, so, yeah, look, the, so where do I think they'll be tested before we take a look at some other things here? Tennessee, because of the run game, obviously, when they play here uh, after the Packer game. And then it's the two Giant games. The Giants, they run the ball extremely well with Barkley. We know Barkley sets some good games against the Eagles. By the way, the Giants have a phenomenal defense. They're They're playing a little bit better than most people thought on defense. So that'll be a a challenge for them. And when you just look at the Eagles schedule, yeah, they're, they're the typical, I hate to say cream puffs games that they clearly should win. And the other thing is we were talking about this and inside the birds, they're going to be a favorite in every game. The other tough game, and this one will be a lot harder than the first one because Dak Prescott will start that game unless he gets hurt again. Whereas Cooper rush started, he was terrible in week six when the Eagles smoked him. Uh, That game in week 16, Christmas Eve, at Dallas, Mike, that's probably, to me, if everybody's healthy on both sides of the fo- football for Dallas, that should be the hardest test of the season. All right, well, let me ask you, because uh, I have your power rankings in front of me. You have the top three, Philadelphia, Kansas City, Buffalo. I think most people have them in some top three order. Four and five, Philadelphia has played Dallas and Minnesota. You have them four and five in your power rankings. Yeah, and I didn't move them from last week, so... 
Dallas was off their bye. And then Minnesota, they had a good comeback win. They're, they're the team out of the top 10. They keep winning close games. They keep finding a way to win. Yeah, they have them at five. They're now seven to one. They haven't lost since they played the Eagles. Then Baltimore, who I'll tell you what, they've turned the season around after a slow start. That was a great win they had over the Saints. Very dominant. They're finding ways to win with a lot of guys hurt. Seattle, the two strongest surprises this season. I'm not as, as surprised as other people are with the Vikings. I thought they'd be over 500 because I, I knew they had a good schedule and a good team, good roster. I get it's a new coaching staff, but Seattle being six and three, I mean, I'm. I, I'll admit, I I, uh, I I I I made six over and under bets before the season started. I'm going to get that one wrong. I had under six. <laughs> well, but I, I you gotta, have them ahead of Miami, the Jets yep, right now. Yep. So you you think you know this why? Seahawks team not only is good, but they are here for the long haul. Well, here's the thing, folks. You could say what you want about Geno Smith. Not only is he not, not only is he in the running for most improved player in the National Football League at offense. He's probably going to be in the running if he keeps this up for the MVP, believe it or not. Geno Smith, yes, that Geno Smith, <laughs> who, by the way, was the Eagles' choice to be quarterback in 2012 with under Chip Kelly heading into their visit at West Virginia. After the visit, they decided they weren't going to draft him. Yeah, and remember, there was a time where people thought Geno Smith might have been the number one overall pick. He ended up sliding all the way to the second round, so it wasn't like this guy was a total bum. In fact, I said the other day, I saw almost every throw he made at West Virginia – His strong suit there was he was so accurate. I mean, he just made every accurate throw. I think, look, we're seeing with Jalen Hurts. You're a product of the offensive system. They got weapons. Metcalf, Lockett, the running back, Walker's a kid, and their offensive line is way better than it's been in the years that they had Russell Wilson when he was running around for his life. Well, he, the problem, though, Mike, on that with Russell Wilson, where I disagree with you, he held on to the ball way too long and it made their offensive line look worse. Fair. But on your point, they drafted two rookie tackles, including Charles Cross as their left tackle. The, the, the two kids have played really well. You mentioned Kenneth Walker has been a great story. Remember, they lost Rashad Penny, their starter, starting running back for the season. But they drafted Walker to replace him. He's been terrific. Look, they they they've been an incredible story. This is uh, and the, but the Jets, I have the Dolphins at eight. They keep winning. They're finding way, ways to win, uh, though their defense is struggling a little bit. But the Jets, they had arguably the NFL's hardest schedule coming in the season. That's why Vegas only had them for five and a half wins. I had them over five and a half. I thought they'd get seven. They're already at six. They're six and three. What an incredible comeback win. And Zach Wilson played a little better last week. But their defense is the story, Mike. One of the best defenses in the National Football League. And their, sec- their secondary, Sauce Gardner, clearly the defensive rookie of the year. He's been awesome. And, and another one. For Seattle, Tariq Woolen, who's a rookie out of Clemson, I think. Yep. He's at corner as well. He's been terrific. Fifth for round Seattle pick. They got him deep yeah. in the draft. Their draft class yep. has been outstanding. Um, speaking of draft class outstanding, Jalen Hurts was a second round pick. And I guess we're eight weeks in. Uh, and we're going to have to start at some point wondering what's, what's the contract going to look like for Jalen Hurts? He's signed through next year at $1.3 million. I would imagine there might be his agent. He might say, Jalen, you're not playing at that number. Yeah, so we, our show that dropped Monday morning, we we had been asked to do this. Uh, it's actually been our one of the most traffic shows in months. So it's a we we, we devoted everything to. We didn't talk about the Houston at all. Uh, it was all contracts. The, the show that drops tomorrow uh, will be all on on the Houston tape. But this one was contracts, and you're right. I mean, it's crazy that I think I have to look it up. Zach Pascal might be making more than Jalen Hurts this season. That's how crazy it is. Uh, yeah, so if he continues to play at this almost MVP level, you're looking at a Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray contract. Dak Prescott making forty million per season. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, look, you can't be less than that if he plays at MVP level. Now, Dak Prescott, the argument is he's done better for longer, no question. Forty-two million per year over three-year average, and then Kyler Murray. Now, Kyler Murray's contract is kind of complicated: forty-six million per season, forty-nine million over forty-nine million for three years, but it's got a very good team structure. That's also a five-year deal. Dak signed a four-year structure. Dax was in 21. Kyler Murray got his uh, before training camp started. It's just a matter of how well he plays. Remember, we, we, we did the show because it's the midway point uh, of the NFL season. He's got to continue to play this well. And they, they also can't lose early in the playoffs. And he can't be the reason, like last year, why they, they struggled against Tampa Bay. They're winning with him in a big way, not just, just, not just with him. They're winning because of him. And if he continues to do this, Mike, 
You know, the Eagles, they love to extend these players early. He, he, they will absolutely, absolutely get, try to get him extended uh, if, if he continues to play this highly. And, but they can't do it till after the season's well, over. Well, and they have a lot of interesting decisions. And I bring this up, you know, Minshew, Sanders, Scott, Kelsey, Samala, Dillard, Fletcher, Javon, uh, Kaiser, TJ, Bradbury, Carter, Johnson, Epps. You wonder... Is the window right here with all those decisions they have to make, and and you can kind of comment on some of those guys, but man, they got a lot of guys who they're gonna have to make decisions on. So if it's like not now, then what? Right. So the couple that could get done before the season ends, it, it could be where they think they might be getting a discount with like T.J. Edwards again. They, they extend his contract uh, for the season ended for a year. They could go to him, and of course that this is the tough thing for. We, we told people before the season started, folks, we promise you, you will not be embarrassed by this receiver group. And we said they certainly have not been. This has been an actually strength of the football team. Who knew? But th- this has been a great story. So I could see them going to TJ Edwards before the season's over. Uh, so the one and, 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 and Darius Slay, see, here's the thing. He signed through next season, but his cap number is so enormous over his 26 million. They've got to lower it. He cannot go into next season with that cap number. His salary is 17 million. So you could extend it. You could severely lower his his base salary, just give him a big signing bonus to extend the contract, a bunch of dummy years. But they could go to a couple of these guys. And now the, the the ones that are going to be the toughest, Mike, of this list will be Miles Sanders if he continues to play well. I would say he would be one. Obviously, as we mentioned, Jalen Hurts, because the numbers would be bigger if he if he's an MVP type. Javon Hargrave over the last two teams, last two games has been brilliant. James Bradbury. What do you do with him? He's playing an exceptional football, bounced back from a tough year last year. And then the safeties, Gardner Johnson, Marcus Epps. I don't see both coming back. The, uh, Gardner Johnson's been phenomenal with the interceptions, five and four game, last four, four, an interception each one of those four games. So they've got some tough decisions to make. A lot there. You just mentioned some pretty good and key players to this whole thing. And we think it's a good you, problem to have. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good problem to have. It's interesting. And, and you know, there's a lot of guys, you know, you mentioned Kaiser White, TJ Edwards. One of the questions uh, for John Gannon today was, hey, Nicobe Dean's not playing at all. Have you, have you looked to try to get a, a package for him or something? And they're like, yeah, we try that with everybody. But it just goes to show uh, there's some good players on this team or guys they think are good players that aren't even getting on the field that will um, affect their decisions. Moving forward, okay. You know, do I want to Kobe yeah. Dean on the field? Yes. So therefore, I'm not going to bring so and so back. That kind of stuff. Well, you could go year to year with T.J. Edwards. Okay, look, he he's probably their most improved player on the football team. He absolutely should be starting. There's no everybody knows that he's played great. He's played well over what anyone could have thought. Give uh, Nick Rollis a credit a credit who coaches him. He's done a great job. Because by the way, as young as a lot of these players, he's only like 28 years old. But they're they're doing a great job of developing him and Kaiser White. You know they've they've cycled through these one year guys. Corey Nelson didn't work. Eric Wilson didn't work. There are other one year linebackers over the years that didn't work. But this guy Kaiser White has been a stud, former safety, as you know, at, at West Virginia. Uh, he he's earning a, a a a reason to come back. But they have leverage here because of Dean. That's their leverage is really in the Kobe Dean in negotiations. They're like, hey, listen, we offer your deal. You don't want it? We'll just go to Dean. Right. Um, It'll be interesting to see Adam Kaplan, the Eagles 8-0, back on Friday here on the Sports Bash. We'll look at the Commanders, who are in town on Monday night football. Tyler Heineke, they're in the wild card mix right now, a half a game out. So big game for Washington coming into Philly Monday night football. And you can hear the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. All right, Adam Kaplan, we'll catch up on Friday. Sounds good. Thanks.